Hello and welcome to the latest Agenda podcast from the Blood Red channel with myself, Matt Addison, alongside my colleague, our Liverpool correspondent, Paul Ghost. In the week that Liverpool were awarded planning permission to begin their extension of Anfield and were linked with several thousand new players, including Florian Neuhaus, what about the players they already have? Extending the deals of some key stars is high up on the agenda for Michael Edwards and co. And this summer could be a crucial time to get in some negotiations. Paul, thanks for joining me. Adrian, we've seen this week, has signed a new contract at Anfield and he's not going to be the last either. Well, Liverpool certainly hope he won't be. Um, yeah, so Adrian signed a new contract on, was it Monday? Um, all the days emerging into one now, but it was one day this week, wasn't it? And I thought that was an interesting one because he's very much in the twilight of his career, isn't he? He's 34, he's probably now third choice goalkeeper at Liverpool behind Cueven Kelleher and obviously Alison Becker. But, uh, well, and he had offers on the table to return back to his homeland, but ultimately he's decided to uh, to sign the extension at Liverpool and basically stay with, with this team. So um, Liverpool now don't need to go looking for for the third choice goalkeeper. It was kind of mentioned that um, once um, Adrian had made this decision, then it was possible that Liverpool would be in the market for a third choice goalkeeper. And, um, you know, the, the potential of that is quite, you know, would be quite interesting to see just who Liverpool would have ended up with. Because when you, after the third choice goalkeeper, it literally could be any kind of goalkeeper, couldn't it? You know, a young up and comer or a, an aging veteran. But uh, we'll never know who Liverpool might have had up their sleeve because uh, Adrian's staying on. and. Yeah, as, as you say, um, Liverpool hopeful that he won't be the last one. So um, what, what we're hearing at the moment is Liverpool are planning to speak to the representatives of uh, Fabinho and Alisson Becker when they return from um, from the Copa America for, for pre-season training. Liverpool still um, best part of a month away before they return to, uh, to the AXA training centre on the 12th of July, I think the date is. But uh, one, once they're back in place, then Liverpool will look to open discussions with those two and I think they deserve it, don't they? You know, they've been two massive parts alongside Virgil van Dijk, you know, two of the three major reasons why Liverpool have, have gone from a, a team that was good enough to challenge to a team that's good enough to, to become champions of, of Europe and England. So, yeah, they they deserve their uh, their new terms. Liverpool are keen to speak to those two. Hopefully that can get resolved quite sharpish. And then Liverpool will, will look to... Uh, to speak to uh, to one or two others, uh, Mohamed Salah is one of them. Virgil van Dijk, again, two players who, who thoroughly deserve any kind of new terms that are uh, put towards their representatives, since Alexander Arnold and Andy Robertson. So uh, the message is very much um, that this is a a group of players that Jurgen Klopp is desperate to, to keep together for a couple more years yet, and um, just continue that maturation period, and maybe add one or two other young players into the squad just to kind of keep it freshened up, but. Certainly, the, the message is that the uh, the core of the squad needs to uh, stick together. Yeah, certainly plenty of, of work for Liverpool to do. We'll come on to one or two of those names that you mentioned shortly. But just before we move on from the goalkeeping situation, Quivin Kelleher, we think, is, is now number two firmly ahead of Adrian in the pecking order. There has been some sort of links with him possibly going out on loan. But I suppose with Alisson as number one, you, you still do need one or two behind him. Do you think that's maybe unlikely that we see Kelleher leave this summer or, or do you think that is a possibility? No, it, 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 I would say that is unlikely. Yeah. Um, everything that you hear at the moment it points towards a new contract for him as well. And and again, I suppose it, it's becoming a bit of a theme, isn't it? Liverpool keen to reward their players who've made great progress. He, he's won. He, I think he made five or six appearances last season, a couple in the Premier League, a couple in the Champions League, I think. Off, off the top of my head, um, fully fledged Ireland international now. I think he came off the bench recently in one of their friendlies, you know, to make that step up from the under twenty one set up to um, to the full international fold. So um, yeah, Liverpool keen to uh, to tie him down for a few more years yet, and um, yeah, it's um, it's you know another interesting summer for the goalkeeping department because uh, obviously. Boris Karius is still on the books. He's going to be looking for, for a new club. Adran, speculation over his future is being put to bed. Obviously, Liverpool keen to get the main man, Alisson, tied down to new terms. And, and Kelleher now is, is number two and in line for a new contract of his own. So um, it's going to be a busy uh, busy couple of months for the, uh, the goalkeeping department and the negotiation team. And 
yeah, um, Liverpool looking to, um, to to crack on with, with quite a lot of business in-house. Yeah, definitely. Marcelo Pitaluga, I think, one to watch out for over the next few seasons as well in terms of those young goalkeepers. But uh, let's go on to some of these bigger names then. I think Fabinho, Van Dijk and, and Salah, as we've said, it, it's kind of fairly obvious why Liverpool would want to, to keep those about. But I think for, for Alisson, Robertson and Trent, they've got, I think, still three years left on their contracts. The fact that Liverpool are prioritising those players, I suppose, just underlines just how important all three of them are to Liverpool moving forward. Yeah, most definitely. And I mean, I think um, I think Liverpool want to give Allison a new contract just for the West Brom goal, to be honest, because without that, he wouldn't have a Champions League football would be to look forward to. Um, but yeah, he, he deserves everything that he gets um, put his way over the summer. You know, it's, it wasn't a, a vintage season for him, one or two um, perhaps uncharacteristic mistakes, particularly against Man City in that defeat. But um, generally, just so assured, so calm. Does the... Um, Makes the difficult things look easy and, and does the simple things with, with no fuss at all. Um, just one of the absolute elite goalkeepers in world football. And um, Liverpool, uh, for me, for my money, he's, he's, he's certainly the, the best goalkeeper that I've seen in a Liverpool shirt. I'm too young to remember Bruce Gravel at his pomp and then obviously Ray Clements. But uh, it'd be interesting to see when Alisson, if he signs that extension and, and then he stays for the duration of that contract, just where he would be rated when he finally leaves Liverpool in terms of some of the best goalkeepers of all time. And and you mentioned um, Trent and Robertson there again. I think, you know, it's, it, their performances kind of speak for themselves, don't they? You know, um, again, it, it, it wasn't a fantastic season for Liverpool, but uh, Robertson was a pretty much an ever-present at left-back. Um, Trent really picked up his form in the last two or three months of the season as well. And he's only 22. Um, for me, he's one of the best right-backs in Europe playing for this boy or club. Um, we, we speak about him a lot, don't we, and, and Liverpool. Um, I, you know, uh, it'd be a no-brainer to, to tie him down for another five or six years because he, he's got designs on being one day a Liverpool captain as well. So I think it'd just be great to watch him kind of flourish over the next few years with that new contract and uh, maybe one day become a captain of, of this football club. And yeah, um, as we as we seem to be a theme already on, on this agenda, Matt, um, everyone kind of, fully deserving of, um, of new contracts. Yeah, and exactly the same for, for Salah, Fabinho and, and Van Dijk, but possibly slightly more urgent for them. I think they've all only got two years left on their deals. It, it's kind of that time, isn't it? We've seen it with Gini Wijnaldum. Once you get into that final two years, it, it's kind of a, a big decision to be made. But I think with all three of those players, probably fairly obvious what Liverpool will want. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's an interesting model because you mentioned it about two years on a, on a contract, but... Um, in a way, it's only one because once you get down to those final 12 months, normally a decision has been made either way, hasn't it? We've seen that with Emre Chan, we've seen that with Gini Wijnaldum and, and I'm sure it happens throughout football when a player is down to, to the last year of his contract and um, nothing gets signed. The decision has been made and the writing is on the wall for some time. So, um, yeah, Liverpool, you know, all, all parties seem to be happy with everything. Um in, in terms of, of Alisson and Fabinho, um, Alisson's such a kind of um, quietly quietly strong character behind the scenes. He's not someone who rants and raves. He, he's, um, his, his opinion is respected in the group, um, I know that much, but it, he's not someone who um, has to um, to shout to be heard, if that makes sense. Um, we, we've seen when, when his father sadly passed away how much um, he is... A, a big figure of this squad with, with so many people kind of publicly speaking out about um, how much um, how much they care about him and, and his family and and generally he does seem to be a, a well liked character behind the scenes so um, I don't anticipate any problems on on that front and um, to, to a, 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 maybe a lesser extent I'm not too sure Fabinho seems to be more than happy at the club as well I mean he's been here since 2018 himself hasn't he and yeah I, I think it's been important for Liverpool to address these um, contract situations sooner rather than later, and if every, everyone is is happy to uh, to sign on the dotted line, then let's get that done and, and move on. Doing all of these contracts, of course, is a, a significant investment for Liverpool to make. There's obviously off the field things like the Anfield extension that we've seen this week. All of those things seem to start to be coming back to the fore again now. It, it kind of feels like 
we're getting a little bit back to, to normality. And I suppose we can't underestimate the importance within that of this Redbird Capital Partners deal as well, because that is something that Liverpool have spoken about as getting back to normal. It kind of feels like that's starting to be the case now. Yeah, you, you, you spot on. I think, you know, everything that you heard from the club at the time, you know, speaking to people about this Red Bear deal, was it just means that it's going to be business, business as usual. Um, and what are we now? It's maybe two months on since that deal was signed. It does seem to be as though everything is getting back to a, something that does kind of look like normality, doesn't it? You know, contracts are on the agenda. Liverpool are making big strides with Anfield Road developments. And um, speaking to someone just before we recorded this, Matt, and they were saying about, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pressing on to, to have 54,000 inside Anfield for August. Obviously, dependent on, on the government restrictions, but uh, Liverpool are very keen to to reopen their doors to everyone, you know, as many as they can. Um, so, where are we now? We're in middle of June, maybe by the middle of August, we'll have a few new contracts under the belt of, of a few key men. And maybe we'll have one or two players, uh, new players on, on the squad list, and we'll have 54,000 in, inside Anfield and looking towards a, a bit of a bright future for uh, for Liverpool, for, for football and, and for, for society in general, hopefully. Yeah, lots of players on that sort of contract priority list, but there's a few others in there as well that kind of got two or three years left on their deal, but are maybe not priorities at the moment. You think of, of Mane, Firmino, Cater, Henderson, Chamberlain. I suppose there's a bit of a decision to be made on those players as well moving forward, because as much as we talk about the other players getting into the last two or three years of their deals, it's not going to be too long until these players are in the same situation. Yeah, I think so. And and, and you mentioned the um, two players who, who stand out for me and reluctant to be overly critical of them, but and Abby Cater and, and Roberto Firmino. I mean, we've spoken about the players there, Salah, Fabinho, Alisson, Van Dijk. You know, these are all players who have more than justified their uh, potential new contracts. You know, they have played played for that contract, haven't they? I mean, Cater, you, you, you can't even get him on the pitch, can you really? I mean, we haven't seen him since he got hauled off before half-time against Real Madrid. A new contract for him, um, you know, sh- should that be forthcoming? I'm not too sure whether he's done enough to justify that. For me, you know, maybe to a lesser extent, but, he, you know, to be fair to say that he wasn't exactly um, sensational last season, was he? So maybe maybe there is something in these players having to to justify their contracts, and, and it's probably the way it should be. I mean, um, don't want a player just drifting through the motions, thinking that another big offer is going to be on the table in three years just because he's had one three years earlier or whatever. And it's probably sh- the way it should be, incentivised kind of play for your contracts and, um, I think with Liverpool's wage bill as well, it's it's one of the biggest in the sport, isn't it? And I think I think that is because of the bonuses that they potentially have paid out or they attached to their contracts very much. You know, you go and make yourself a Liverpool hero, you go and win yourself trophies, win the club trophies and the financial rewards will follow. And I think that seems to be the model behind the scenes at Liverpool very much. Uh, we're not just going to offer... Player X, three hundred and fifty grand a week because we're signing them. We're going to offer him maybe, you know, just shy of two hundred with the potential to earn a lot more if he goes and wins the Premier League. And um, you know, over the last two years or so, that seems to have served Liverpool very well. And elsewhere, in terms of, of summer business for Liverpool, obviously a big focus on contracts. But they've already got Ibrahim Konate in. They say they're not necessarily going to be prioritising a midfielder, but. Would you expect one or two more arrivals potentially before the end of the transfer window? Yeah, I, I do, to be honest. I mean, as you say there, Liverpool, all the noise is that they're not kind of prioritising a, a Gino Wijnaldum replacement. But uh, I just think he, he, was, he was so so important to Liverpool that um, you can't really discard what he gave to Liverpool in terms of his availability and, and his durability and his quality. Um thinking that players like Oxlade-Chamberlain and Cater are going to be able to fill that void. You know, Van Alden played 51 times last season, so to kind of throw that away and, and think that the, the, what the options that are already available to Klopp are going to be able to fulfil that same kind of void, I'm not too sure. So uh, I'd imagine Liverpool are still looking around the market for a, for a new midfielder. Florian Neuhaus seems to be someone who they are keen on. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens with that one. Um 
And I think they're going to be after the forward as well. You know, Shane Antikiri was talking today. You know, the kind of cliche, um, I'm just focusing on the, the tournament, the national tournament at the moment. And, and he will speak to his agent when he returns back to Merseyside. And um, you'd be hard pushed to think that he wouldn't be thinking of leaving, you know, with approaching maybe the last three or four years of his career. He, he wants to be playing regularly, I'm sure. And Divock Origi is a player who, who hasn't fired on, on any cylinders really last season. So, could he be another one who, who looks to move on? If either or leave, then I'd imagine they're pull are looking at an additional forward as well because they've obviously got Jota there and, and the front three who aren't going anywhere. But for places for five, for three positions throughout the season, that's going to be difficult to um, to to kind of juggle that one. And I'm sure down the other end of the pitch this season, what can happen when you um, you go into a season a little bit short in one particular area? So. Um, I do expect a forward to arrive and possibly a central midfielder as well. And of course, there's Takumi Minamino to throw into that as well. But when you think of Origi, Shakiri, Minamino, I'm sure Liverpool at the right price would be prepared to let one or two of these players go. But you probably can't afford to let all of them go at once because, as you say, you don't want to leave yourself short. It's kind of a balance between the two things, I think, for, for Liverpool this summer. Yeah, it is. And, and Minamino's been a bit victim of circumstance to an extent um he come in in january and by march it was locked down and by the time it all started up again liverpool were champions of england and everyone was just waiting for the next season and then next season start it's always a difficult task to break into that front three anyway but he didn't really get a proper opportunity to get a good run on the side and then obviously um goes to southampton and Southampton seems to be keen, don't they? Liverpool are, are suggesting at the moment that they'd like to keep Minamino, but uh, I think if Southampton are, are keen on, on making him their player, I think Liverpool um, won't be you know, putting the phone down too quickly, uh, let's uh, perhaps phrase it that way. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have, of course, all the latest on contracts, transfers and plenty more across Blood Red and the Liverpool Echo across the course of the summer. Make sure you sign up to our newsletter. We've some exciting plans for that in the pipeline from next week. The link for that is in the description below. For now, though, from myself, Matt Addison and from Paul Gorse, that's all we've got time for here on the latest Agenda podcast. Goodbye for now.